But here we go, guys. We embark on the final mission. I am incredibly appreciative of all of you for being here, whether you are watching on Twitch or you watching on YouTube, whether this is your first stream of mine that you popped into or you've been with me throughout this entire series from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for the support. And it feels like the right time to wrap this up. So let's go. I feel ill. Is that weird? I feel kind of ill. Oh my gosh, don't say that. Philo, don't. I'm so scared. Thank you, thank you, Shami. Clive, if you see me dad up there, tell him we were right to leave his legacy with you. <laughs> Not mid already starting to cry. Tell him he'll be in the front row. There's no way he'd miss this. God. Well, behave yourself, Mid. We'll see. Damn. It's already kicking off, guys. Oh, oh Dion with the reaction. I love Dion. I love Dion. I feel sick. I feel so ill. So, you're in charge now, Gav. And what does Taya have to say about that? Come back before she finds out, eh? Sorry. Your Grace, I shall pray for your safe return. That's kind of you, but you should pray he took his medicine. Uh. I didn't spend all night grinding herbs for his lordship to lead them on his nightstand. Again. <laughs> you needn't fear, Lady Tyre. And thank you. <clears throat> See that your brother comes back in one piece. Or... At most two. Any more and you can heal him yourself. Two? I'll keep that in mind. That's fair, so well, the there's nothing to say that hasn't already been said. But that's never stopped me before. That's so, so Byron. Just you do what needs doing. Yeah, and don't worry about us. We'll do our best, Uncle. That'll be well. That is so Byron. Mm. If that is all? Not quite. No. Jill. It's time, isn't it? It is. Take care of him. <laughs> and you. You take care of her too, boy. Not Toggle not going with us. I feel really unwell. Don't forget, Clyde. We all choose our own path. Believe in yours. I do. I'll be back. I promise. I love you, Jim.
I know. Don't pull a Han Solo. Oh, too. good. Okay. I feel so unwell. I don't like how this is panning out. I feel like this really doesn't bode well. Obviously no spoilers, I'm just like talking through thoughts. This is like really, really bad foreshadowing. staying behind like this. Yeah, you knew it. Wow, well done. Are they hanging on his tail? Oh, Joel, it's breaking my heart. Messier? It does feel sad leaving her behind. I hope it's in his hands, but there was something like long dangling off the tail. Oh, it's just the point of his tail. Or like on his back or something. There you go. I was like, I thought it was them like flip-flopping flip about. I was like, Jesus, look at this. But I... I really don't have a good feeling about this. I don't know, there's something about the way that they left everyone off. I'm now nervous that none of them are going to make it back. Here they come. Hold on, Joshua. Already am. Bless them. It's very pretty. Wow, so beautiful. What if, like, I don't know, just being able to appreciate Bahamut's design again. It's a crazy looking thing, huh? I think I'm just gonna be perpetually crying this whole time. I just feel so ill, dude. It's a good sign that it seems at least Dion has made it into Origin with us. I was nervous at first that it was gonna be him really struggling to get inside, him dying, getting us inside. So this is already off to a better start than I had hoped for, but that's not saying much. Ugh, and the voice acting for the game has been so incredible. So good. So um, this is origin. Very like emotion filled. A far cry from heaven. Where it all began. Where it all begins. Our arc. Your architect. It was here that we slumbered, here that we waited for centuries, clinging to our decrepit shell for fear that we might have need of it once again. 
But you have come at last. And now we shall be truly complete. Well, there's three of us and one of him. Let's make it count. Dion just going off the way. Beautifully animated, it's so gorgeous. Ah, oh, his light is so beautiful. Wow, look at it! Dominance. We will show you what it means to suffer. Has he combined with the Phoenix already? Ultima Prime. Ifrit, Phoenix, and Bahamut. All of us fighting together. Wow. Ah, it looks like Ifrit. It's a much bigger Ifrit. Oh, with wings. And we are not paired up with the Phoenix yet. Okay. Ah, it's a beautiful iridescence. So beautiful. So epic. Obviously not looking good. They've done barely any damage to him, and we're taking the majority of damage. I wonder if it matters that Joshua's got a bit of Ultima still in him, right? I think the Phoenix has a blue blue on its chest. Don't do it. to him? No. Yes. Some, but barely. Barely, barely. Move aside, Phoenix. You will answer for what you done. Okay, some damage. I'm so stressed out, you have no idea. Try disaster. Try disaster. Yeah, try disaster. Jesus, look at it. I'm shocked that that worked. 
I mean, I know it didn't work, work, but I'm surprised it worked to this point. This unpleasantness could have been avoided. No, maybe the blue in his chest isn't Ultima there. Maybe it's just his design. I knew that was gonna happen, but... Like we had predicted for a long time that something like that was gonna happen but it doesn't make it any less sad such a good character such a good end for him <coughs> i'm so happy that we got to see more of him Clive. Clive. <sighs> Did I mention you look terrible? <laughs> that means two of us. No, oh, I'll be all right. And Dion. I just don't feel good for any of them. Thank you.
Also, I'm sorry about sniffing into the mic. I can't avoid it. Press on. Always. Hopefully it's just not too loud for you guys. Jesus. The core. What an amazing, amazing moment with Dion and the three of <coughs> and the three of them fighting. We had talked a lot about how like the foreshadowing. I'm sorry about Dion. Don't be. Please. He did what he had to do. And it's time we did the same. Especially in that side mission with Hippocrates, um, like really heavily kind of foreshadowed he's not going to be coming back, but that he had earned it all the time. Should we stop? So good. And because of the cough. No, I think we're past that, Clive. Oh, Joshua, bless you. I suppose we are. I'm sort of intentionally taking my time. One, Giffy, thank you so much for the tier one. 28 months. Can't let those ads. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Paragon, for the gifted sub to Kairos. So cold. So empty. We're close, aren't we? It uh, seems that way. God. But I don't want to think what could be waiting for us in there. Then think instead of those waiting for us at home. I know, Sean. I know. At least they had that kind of emotional goodbye, but they didn't kiss, and it was this whole thing. Lemons welcome in, by the way. Dan, thank you for the 200 bit cheer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Clive. Are they all the icons? That's definitely E fruit. Or is it they multiple e fruits? I think it must be multiple e fruits, right? This is the Nexus. A wellspring of life. <laughs> Yours and ours. As we watch the world stumble slowly to its dark end. It was here we pledged a new beginning. And now, with the ether we have harvested, I shall raise my kin from their eternal slumber. That together, we may usher in a new age of reason. Hey, look at his ears. They're like flat this on his head. about creation. Only self-preservation. You condemned an entire world so that you alone might escape death. Alone. Him. Alone. Life. I think I understand. He... You have to finish, Joshua. You have to finish. He what? Thought we were carrying out Sid's In this idea. You have served us well. You have both served us well. Damn. That feels fucking Welcome terrible. Home, brother. That feels fucking terrible. <gasps> no, they are not. I thought... 
it was me. But it wasn't my grasp that grew weaker. It was theirs that grew stronger. No, they are not. They're not gonna have this like rip out of his chest. the same. Clive. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. Shh, shh. The one possessed of the destructive flames of Ifrit and the healing flames of the Phoenix. I once believed would be Ultima's true form. But I was wrong. I see it now. Why you will never become Ultima's vessel. I don't care. Just hold on. Listen to me, Clive. You remember the murals? People once knew that Ultima was their god. That he created them. And they worshipped him, prayed to him, looked to him for guidance. Okay. In vain. In vain. For he did not listen. Right. Did not acknowledge our will. And so we strayed from his path to forge one of our own. Mm -hmm. So absorbed was he in his own desires. So driven by his own will alone that he shunned the one thing that could have made him truly powerful. Love. Faith. Faith. The same faith people now place in you. Okay. Faith that you will fulfill their dream, Sid's dream, of creating a better world for us. Faith that you will follow in Father's footsteps and save those who need saving most. Faith that you will answer Jill's plea to save yourself. The difference is, Clive, you chose to listen, and that is what has steeled our bonds. Bonds that helped you stand firm when Ultima's pole was at its strongest. His power may be absolute, but so is ours, and so will yours be. With my light in your heart, not even a god might stop us. Joshua! <sighs> Don't. Don't do it, you Enough, Clive. My body is too far gone. If the wind does not take me, the curse will. Beautifully animated. And this is the one thing that Joshua was afraid for a while was of Clive taking his power, you know. It was right like after. Look I at it. I've always been proud to call you my shield. But now, it is the world that needs you. Thank you. Oh. 
their relationship is so beautiful. Right. Look at me, Joshua. Open your eyes. Open your eyes, damn you. Why? Why did you do this? He's been protecting you. God, it's gut wrenching. It's so horrible. And does does the final piece fall into place? Oh, jeez. This looks very Final the Fantasy, I, primed, from what I know. But one task remains. To empty the vessel. Oh, it's, it's such a well-crafted villain. Because we all ha actually hate him right now. So smart, so sad. <sighs> what a beautiful visual, just that. Isn't it? And he'll never leave you, you know. With me to the end. Even now, you would deny the inevitable. Not the claw toes. <laughs> Guys, I can't mess this fight up. I have That's to do really this so well. Out. Please, 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 please. I can't muck this up. On this, my sword, I swear. To shield the firebird's flame. Forever. Beautiful visual. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Wait. I know I'm being the worst thing. We don't have toggle with us right now. Um, so I'm gonna remove this toggle thing. Ah, it's a shame. We didn't get a chance to do it. It's fine, it's fine. He's here in spirit. It's a beautiful way to say it. And I, there's no way that I would have known to not have it. You would have had to have spoiled to me that we couldn't take Torga with us, which we obviously would not have wanted. I... like very Final Fantasy kind of boss. Having played Kingdom Hearts 1 and some of 2. Plus it just like from what I've seen. Unexpected. How is it that your will yet endures? Because it's not so easily broken. Great dialogue. 
shall see it sad. For such is my will. Also, I assume that the sword that I'm using in this visual is the actual sword that I received, right? staying there for that which feels surprising ay 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 it's sad because we fought one of the dragons that has a very similar attack to that Thank you for the follows, by the way. And obviously, I'm not catching up with chat right now. I want to focus, Why? focus. What laden force feeds these flames? I sense more here than mere will. Is this Logos? Have you truly become free? Free? No. I forbid it. You are not a god. You are but flesh and bone. You are not one of us. I know. I've used all three gates raid. I'm not allowed anymore. Wow. Dude is coping hard. He huffing copium. But look how What's beautiful. But we are no longer yours. Our flames are our own, and they burn as one. Yes, come on. We must have transform into the Efreet with the with the Phoenix wings, surely. Yes, we do. Fantastic. I forgot how to use Ifrit's attacks. I feel like I've not, I mean, not that it's that much more complicated, but. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, that's right. I can skate towards him, right? What's the, hey, hey, hey. light speed. What is the wildfire? Great Victoria, like, you know, upbeat sort of music. There you go, light speeding like this. Gotta kick his ass right! I can't be I can't be failing this fight, ain't no way I can't give him the satisfaction. Thank you all for the follows, by the way. Welcome in, lovely people. It's so gorgeous. I'm just at a loss for words, and I'm really happy that the final fight feels like it somehow kind of 
measures up to a way in uh, how to harm it fight. Ay! How the Bahamut fight played and felt. Okay. And the galaxy just looks beautiful. I hate him, dude. I hate him so much. <laughs> Ultima Risen. I, 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 I. Am I supposed to be doing damage to you to prevent this? Oh my god. I can't have this happen. I can't fail the DPS check. I'm going to shriek. to possibly do more DPS right now. Oh my god, I'm gonna fail this, guys. Okay, the... Ay, 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 ay. Speed up, speed up, speed up. There we go. Please tell me that did a good amount of damage. Okay, this is doing a good amount of damage. Okay, okay. But now these things don't charge up that quickly. Do I get a 10 second countdown at least, I hope? Oh, was I too far away? Don't say that. One more ability, dude. One more ability. Come on, quick, quick, quick. This has to be it. I couldn't bear the idea of losing that, guys. I would actually have vomited into my lap. I forgot this Spitfire operated like the Titan ability for a while, so I wasn't holding it down properly, which was just stupid on my part. Look how gorgeous though. I'm actually genuinely at just a loss for words. Not the rapture. Stop this shit. Uh. Precision dodging for my life, guys. Where are you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Ooh. 
I don't even think I focus this much fighting bloody Elden Beast. Or whatever. Quickly. Great. This amazing finisher. Come on. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's so amazing looking. It's all amazing looking. No. 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 My will is inviolable. Something is wrong. You're afraid. You always have been. Let's hear it, Clive. From the moment the Blight exposed what you were, weak, you conceived us to prove otherwise. But the result shook you to the core. For in us, you saw yourself and realized we had the potential to be more than you could ever be. And so you turned your back on your creation. You're back on the world, like the coward you are. You think you know me? You know nothing, Logos. Nothing. Phase, phase three. In light, I stand above you, my rebirth complete. Okay. And you, for your defiance, shall pay the proper price. An eternity of anguish. So I guess this is his, like, truest point, maybe? Pain, suffering. You have known none of these. But we have. So we know what they grant. They bring us together. And that makes us strong. Wow. Is he in the range of it? Barely. He's either barely in range or it just barely does damage. I'm not even going to try and parry any of this. Oh, Garuda. Oh my gosh. He might be going through like a volley of... Uh, Past Titans that we've defeated. He's gone. He's gone. He's right in front of me. Ultim Ultimalius. Ultimalius, yes, is the name. Yeah, the lightning strikes. God. Get the Giga Flare off whilst he's still sat. He's 
Rudas. I feel like he's only using Garuda's abilities right now. Oh. Wow, look at that. Did that sound like Gav? Have Sid back with us. Yes, Sid. Titan. Yes, we're used to this ability. It's quite nice that they have your friend's voices instead of like Benedicta, Hugo. I actually do think that's a nice, a nice touch. Whoa, guys! That's the first time I've used that ability up in the air like that. That's awesome. That looks so cool. That looks so cool. I know I'm not one for aerial combat, but I'm glad that I got to show that bit off. Better late than never. We, we got it in the end, baby. I'll see if I can try and do it again. It's kind of hard to do. That sucks. I use my... Don't you dare use Dion's power, you disgusting, disgusting human. That's my boy. Is that Byron? It should have been Dion though. Why not Dion's voice, huh? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Together. Darkness unending. Odin. My dad? No, mine is the altar at which you pray. Mine are the eyes that look down upon you all. Limit break. Look at Yet the music. The li see. Listen to the music. You are no better than us. We are one and the same. I need my own limit break action right now. I knew there was no way I was going to pull that off. I, I can't dodge it. I can't dodge it. I can. I can dodge it. I can dodge it. Kind of. I 
ay, 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 ay. Don't you dare use the Phoenix. Come on. <laughs> Where is he? Ay. Oh no. I don't think it's going to hurt him, is it? Fatty. Ay. The music, the music, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. Oh my god. I I'm stuck. Hey! Finally, I get to use the Titan ability against him. I don't think I've been able to use it this whole uh, game, but I fight, whatever. Come on, Diamond Dust. Okay. Rising is so good. Not have made it here on my own. You need learn his lesson. I carry with me the hopes and dreams of my brothers, my sisters. And it is they who will <laughs> give me gonna the be crying to in the crowd. Okay, guys. Final push. victory fanfare guys yes yes let's go let's go let's go i'm gonna start crying again dude that felt so good where's his stomach hole we've been deprived of his Tell me, what 
What do you imagine will befall this world now that you have gained your precious freedom? I honestly don't know. But I doubt it will be pretty. A sorry tale of sin and suffering, hardship and pain. And it was for this that you fought so fiercely? Why? It's who we are. We fight. We survive. We endure. We don't need a reason. We are imperfect creatures. When we stumble, we reach for a shoulder to lean on. When we fall, we stand back up. We see the horizon, ever out of reach, and still we march on. Certain the answers lie just beyond it. Because that is our way. Am I taking his power? My congratulations. Relish this victory, knowing that you have but delayed the inevitable. It's not a good note to end on. Your world is already dead. May you enjoy an eternity on its blackened husk. Very grim. Very, very, very grim. Wow. And it's almost like he was decapitated since it was the last thing to to leave him. Flashbang. I'm not ready to see Joshua. No, please, not the flashbacks that it's going to regress to when they're children or something. Yeah, we knew it. Ugh. God, I can't bear looking at my mum there. Oh, Byron's there. Wow. I wonder if he was there earlier in the game and we just didn't obviously know, rec recognise him. Cheeky wink. <laughs> it's 
so cute. Is this Edda's baby, maybe? No, no, it's him. It's Joshua's baby. Put the feather on his chest. Are you gonna revive him? Are you gonna revive him? I'm gonna absolutely lose my shit if he's gonna get revived. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> Wait, no, no. Ultima's power was too great for this vessel all along. But while I have it, perhaps I can use it to set things right and see Ultima's legacy. Bearers, dominance, crystals, magic, consigned to the flames. Even if it means the end of me. Incredibly well done. Kind of reminds me of the fall of the tower in Lord of the Rings. It's the same like glass sound, you know, kind of glass feel to it. Oh, this reminds me of the beach scene with Jill. <gasps> Oh my god, wait, is he there? That has to be him, right? I think that's him. He's alive. turning into stone, is he? Skylight. 
This is like the coolest thing ever. Oh, not the callback to the original line, dude. It's so sad. They're so close, but so far away. She has no idea. They all don't know. Like, po probably like the worst possible ending to all of this. What are you gonna call him? Let me see, let me see. Oh, Gav is just buzzing. Oh, sweet little one. Got a smile for your Uncle Gav. But so loud, you bird. What? I was only. Shh, you're scaring him. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> oh. And Togo doesn't know. Jill don't know, like he's here and he's just dying, dude. Oh my god, now they know. Oh, she definitely knows. To that. Gab knows. The world's yours now. Yours to do with as you please. <sighs> That's what Sid wanted. That's what they both wanted. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh, poor Jill, dude. <laughs> How sad, though. How sad, though, to be Clive out there on the beach. Turning to stone and like to be alone, you know, and they know, but he doesn't know that they know. He's all by himself, but he's so close to them, yet so far from them. It's like fucking gut wrenching, dude. Yeah, they definitely know. They could. They definitely know. Gav knows. Jill knows. Torgal knows. I want to mute the game oh because of the track i'll let it play it's a beautiful track i appreciate that though it's fine i want to use this time thank you dan for the 500 bit cheer i know there's an end credit scene um and i normally don't ever skip through credits i use it as a time to to chat to you guys so I would love to chat through with you guys about thoughts and feelings about the end, especially because I wasn't engaging with chat whilst that whole thing was going on. Thank you, Moon Moon. Game score, we'll see. Thank you, Super Kojima. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Yeah, I'll leave the song in. It's fine. Your reaction to the end was so beautiful. Homer Princess, thank you. I'm a very teary person. I'm like a very like emotionally attached to stuff. And the game was like just fantastic thank you all for the follows by the way thank you all so much for being here whether you're like live with me right now on twitch or you watch this on youtube yeah yeah thank you for the five gifted subs you sweetheart i'm just like an absolute shambles what an absolute like journey this has been to get through all of this and it's just like ugh, amazingly well done and we knew like in the very very last bit of it going up 
it was so much foreshadowing that the three of them are in trouble and it was my biggest fear that all three of them were going to die doing this mission we had a pretty strong sense of how dion was going to die they'd set up really well about his like redemption arc hey thank you thank you scary slumber for the thousand bit cheer i was supposed to go to bed i obviously didn't great job i hope despite the pain you enjoyed the game i this is one of my favorite games of all time i don't think i've ever emotionally connected with a game like quite to this level i am absolutely loving it. and thank you for sticking through with me to the end thank you to all of you who are here thank you for the follows everyone um but we're saying we had a sense of how dion dion's had built up this whole redemption arc he had felt the guilt of what had happened in his hometown he wanted to go and he had like a real vendetta against ultima and we knew that bahamut and dion was our ticket in to to go and fight the big bad so that makes a lot of sense that that happened that way red of the five gifted red thank you very much i massively appreciate that and thank you all for the follows thank you thank you um and uh uh had the fears that joshua was gonna die joshua has been struggling for a long time with what was eating ultima up joshua was also at first really resistant about the idea of him melding with clive and clive taking his his abilities so it was kind of painted as like a character arc that joshua was going to embrace being combined with clive and and it was kind of like leading to that towards that in the end and there was part of me that really thought that they were going to keep Clive alive. I just was like, they're not going to kill all three of them. I could see very clearly how they were going to kill two of them. Um, and then there was also part of me from a practical standpoint. Thank you, Bison, for the 500 bit cheer. Shout out to the long journeys and great friends. Yeah. And the follows, of course. Thank you, all of you following right now. Um, but there was there was part of me. It's like, oh, well, if, there, if you didn't do all the side missions before the end of the game, could you come back and do them? JB, thank you for the tier two, 29 months. Thank you. Um, and so I was like, maybe they won't kill Clive. Maybe they'll just kill the two of them. But obviously they killed Clive. Um, in like in a really emotional, gut-wrenching kind of way. It feels like a very... It's one thing, I think, for him to have destroyed the planet and for it to have disintegrated and he kind of goes along with it. But to me, it feels like an extra sort of like twist of the knife um twist of the knife to um have him make it back to earth and to be so close to them all and yet so far away it feels like the cruelest of possible ends you know cassery thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs you lovely thank you uncle jim with the 10 gifted thank you thank you thank you so much you absolute legend i'm incredibly appreciative thank you all i think i saw somewhere that uh, i think it was gatorade or someone had said i'm really happy that they went there and if there's one thing that I have to say about this game continuously, it's that they, and I, part of me wonders if they took inspiration from Game of Thrones for this, because um, we know they watch Game of Thrones, but they will continuously go there with the story. And what they don't do is do something that's meant to be salacious or, or bombastic for the sake of, for, for the sake of it, you know? I think everything that they've done, the shocking parts have all been with in better service of the story and i as much as it fucking breaks my heart that clive dies at the end i think it does serve the story well also if you think about clive i don't know how you carry on beyond all of this and if, again if there was a lot of really heavy foreshadowing a lot of the the messaging between clive and jill about what they want to do when they get beyond this and the world they want to create and it does really set up that that world is not going to happen for them it's all for is and i'm like getting choked up even thinking about it but the game top to toe was so incredibly well done i mean well not top to toe look it wasn't a perfect game we talked about some issues from from a pacing standpoint it was very dialogue heavy some of the dialogue when it's written beautifully it's written beautifully and it's and it and it adds to the story in a really perfect way and it's so artfully done there are certain times where it is there is a little too much of it and it weighs down the story there were some side missions that weren't very fun to play through and i know i don't know if michael was still here but um michael was here earlier and there have been a couple others who have 
started to play the game, but they go, you know, it's too much talking, it's too slow paced, and just kind of think it's not for me. And granted, like, not every video game is going to be for every person. Um, but I do think it's one of the things that's a real shame of this game is that I think that there are some things that unnecessarily weigh it down because the story, I think, is incredible. I think Ultima is a villain. Whilst there was part of me that really doesn't like or wasn't really that drawn to the idea of, you know, this upper deity sort of fantastical something other than like really pulling the strings and having a say over what happens in on Earth or whatever. Um, I think it was an interesting concept and for what it was, it was really interestingly like well played out. Yeah, welcome to JRPGs, I know. Um, but even like in Game of Thrones, for example, I was never that drawn to or interested in the White Walker um, plotline. I thought that the human conflict was really interesting. And what I think the White Walker plotline does is not like add to the story in a really meaningful way, but kind of forces other situations or pairings to happen. It's kind of the always ever present, like looming threat. Um, and so I'm kind of like so-so on that. I also think that they, one thing that I really love that they did that I feel like a lot of other media wouldn't have done is like end storylines early or reveal plot twists early on so that you're not just building up to like that thing. So for example, two key moments that stick out to me. One, Joshua's reveal that Joshua's still alive. That happens really early on in the story. And I'm so thankful for that because even though the two, Clive and Joshua, don't have a lot of... Even though Joshua and Clive don't have maximized screen time together because of it, it's still like, oh, okay. I think a lot of people would have maybe held out on that plot twist for a lot longer. Where if I think if you'd held out for any longer, you could have kind of would have been like, oh, we knew that or like that's so predictable, whatever. But revealing it early on, I think they did a great job. And also the end of Annabella, Anna, Annabelle, Annabelle, Annabella, uh, the mum. I think there are also a lot of players who would have drawn out her part in the story beyond what it needed to. And I think her dying in the manner with which she died at the time that she died really services her story the best because once she had lost her child, her hope, her offspring, her hope for progressing her family line, that's it for her. That's all she cares about. And so there's no reason for her to, in her mind, carry on and um, and progress. And I think, yeah, narratively, it's it's really strong. There are some things that hold it back. But for the most part, I just think it's all been incredibly well done. The combat feels so smooth, so fluid. And I love that there it allows you a lot of customization. You can choose which icons you want to pair together. I, as if you've made it to this point, you can tell, like, I didn't use a lot of aerial combat. I was like barely ever in the air. My build was not set up to use aerial combat because I just was not my like go-to to do it. Um, but if you want to do that, you could do that. If you want to like lean more in magic, less in melee, you can do that. I think there's a lot of breadth in there, but also that no matter what you do, no matter what combination of things you set up, that it's all incredibly um, fluid and I don't know, like rewarding. It feels good to do it all, you know? Um, and that was really great. Combat was so satisfying, so well done. And again, they learned how to do Epic on such a great scale. I think sometimes it can be really hard to do Epic well, um, but anytime that they had these big bombastic boss fights, they it was almost always in, either an arena that was like small enough or like the camera was close close tight enough on you that you still got a sense of like the size and scale of what you are and like the power behind your character or if you were in a scenario where it was you were somewhere kind of bit panned a bit further out like for example in that final fight with ultima when we're both in our ifrit form um it's just phenomenally well done the scale is still there like the the epicness of it they I, I, i'm sort of at a loss for words i mean also to be clear i'm doing this analysis one whilst i'm sick two whilst my contacts are still fogging through having cried so much i don't even want to know 
if there is any makeup left on my face, okay? Because we're not, we're all not gonna comment on it, all right? It is what it is, but it was incredible. It was just incredibly, incredibly well done. And I do wonder, honestly, what happens if you try and play the game after the credits? I would assume that it would do kind of like how Zelda does, um, where it'll just teleport you back to before you do the main mission. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not too sure how it, how it works. We'll see, we'll find out. That obviously has to be a way, but. Yeah, if you see rude makeup, no you don't. Yeah, truly. I'm trying to think of other games that got me emotional like this, and I think they're super few and far between. And really, I think that's done because, I think, I think the reason why that's the case is because they've explored interpersonal relationships so well, so meaningfully, so convincingly, um, that you get attached to these people, you know? And none of these people are perfect, but I also feel there were very few times in the story where I go, come on, like, this is so... It, it's weird because it wasn't like a lot of the story beats were crazy obvious and yet they were heavy-handed at points with delivering certain messages in a way I kind of actually really admire it um, but they go there is no room for interpretation we know exactly what story we want to tell we know exactly what the takeaway is we are not gonna leave it up to you to not to say that there isn't some room for like theory crafting or whatever but like the message of the game is very clear um where i think there are a lot of other games that leave it a bit more wide open to interpretation and that's not to say that those types of games are bad i think that there's something that i enjoy about that that i enjoy about like the absolute ambiguity but that's definitely definitely not here um yeah i don't know that's kind of a brain dump of, of thoughts Trying to think if there's anything else I've not yet covered that I should cover. Favorite boss fight I've not talked about? It would have to be Bahamut. I think it's got to be the Bahamut one. I mean, the Ultima one is good fun, um, especially at the very end when you're summoning all the other icons and Ultima summoning the icons and you hear the voices of your friends. But the Bahamut one is, is the first fight in the game I think where you really get a grasp of like, I don't know, because the Titan fight had epicness, but there was something about the Titan fight that I just couldn't get over. It felt more silly to me. Whereas the Bahamut one was epic and beautiful and big. And with Joshua coming in, it was just so fantastically done. Uh, any cons of the game or critiques, I should say. My biggest critique, and this will not be a surprise to anyone who's seen any of these other streams or has watched practically any of these videos on YouTube because I realize I talk about it ad nauseum. And I know this is, in the big picture of things, it's a really small gripe. I know that there's no perfect solution. I know that a lot of people don't care about this. But an issue for me was a lot of the um, animation uh, of characters within like non-scripted cutscenes. The animation was really poor. The lip syncing wasn't that great. And it wasn't even like, I, I couldn't look past like lip syncing issues. I just think it was even like the emotiveness in the face wasn't there. And the reason why it was such uh, a contentious point for me was like two things. I think one, three things, I guess. One, the watermark for this kind of animation is just higher these days. We see so many games that do it so well um, that I think the standard is just higher. Two, the voice acting in the game is so good. And when they when the cutscenes are well animated, they're so well animated. But it's like the the voice the voice acting is so good. It's also an story an emotionally driven story, right? You're meant to want to connect with these people, and so to have this amazing voice acting and to have it in moments be really let down by what's happening from an animation standpoint was really sad. And then I think the third point of why it really upset me is also because you know that it wasn't like that because of lack of talent. You know that they knew how to animate that stuff because we've seen it. We've seen moments in the game where it's phenomenally beautifully animated and it sucks because you know they can do it. And the reason they didn't do it, I would have to believe, is because of uh, time and money. 
right? It's either time or money. And I know someone in the YouTube comment had said, you know, like for JRPGs or something like that, um, these elements just like aren't that as aren't as important. And so like it's fine to let it slide on certain areas to and have it focus on on others. I don't know how true or not that is, um, but if that is the case, that would make me really sad because the voice acting is so good. I think that the animation deserves to uphold and celebrate that, um, regardless if you're in a big story cutscene or if you're in, you know, a side mission, something rather. Also, because frankly, all the side missions at the end in particular are so emotional, so emotional, so epic, so big. Um, so for me, that was honestly the biggest, that was my biggest um, issue with the game or like my, my most common grievance. I think the other one is something that I touched upon much earlier on, which is that, um, that um, the pacing, some of the pacing is really off. In some moments it's fantastic and amazing and they do this thing that I think is really brave and really epic where they are just so relentless with it. They, you go through these big story beats and I think where a lot of other story driven games would give you a moment for pause, give you a moment to reflect, give you a moment to kind of like breathe. This game would relentlessly pull you through, pull you through, pull you through epic um, moments. Uh, and I loved that and I admired that, but there are also so many times where the game was just weighed down. Um, I think the side missions in the beginning were missable except for like the couple in the field the one with the wolf and one with the bear are called chloe those really stood out and those were real moments in the game where i go like oh wait some of these side missions are actually really good and i, I don't want to risk missing out on any of them which is why i've done this is 100 percent um but i kind of wish that they would have gotten rid of all the side missions that really weighed things down and then instead um yeah just had the side missions not even saying like you couldn't have some like lower beat ones you, you it's the p trouble with pacing right it's also you can't be up here all the time we talked about this a lot you can't be up here all the time because you can't demand that level of energy from the viewer the player whatever you want to call it um you need the moments of reprieve you need the moments of breath you need the moments of to collect yourself um but I think it could have been done a bit better. And I guess also the thing where you really struggle with doing that as a game dev, I would have to believe, not that I've worked in game dev, not that I know anyone who does game dev, um, but you're kind of designing a game in a way for two different audiences. You're designing a game for people who are going to only play through the main missions. And then you're designing for game for people who are gonna play through side missions and main missions, whether it's all side missions or only, only a handful of them. Um, and so you couldn't have it be that okay, the side missions are meant to work because your moments of reprieve and your main missions are then still up there and still epic because what that would mean for the player base who's only playing main mission stuff is that you're demanding that level of energy and attention from them throughout the entire time. You're not giving them the spectrum and scale of emotion to kind of like work through um, and the moments for pause. So I'd have to believe it's really difficult and something that I'd said at one point in the game and I in a way sort of still stand by it. I know it wouldn't be done. I know just games aren't gonna do this, but part of me had really wished that they had cut back on some of the main mission stuff that felt like a bit like filler, a bit like your downtime stuff, and then just better worked in the side mission stuff so that really there was no side content. You had to sit through and play through all the content, which again, I know it's probably unlikely to happen because there are some people who want to play through a 35 hour game and there's some people who want to play through what i assume for me has to be an 80 hour playthrough you know um but it really didn't suit them well like there were the 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 point where you're having to collect um oh gosh you're in hugo kupta's kingdom i cannot remember the name of it right now Dalmechia, and you're you're with um the woman and her brother, you're with Goots and he has lost his past. That whole thing was so unremarkable to me. It was so, granted it introduced you to characters that had a really lovely arc in the end of it. That main mission itself was terrible. It has to be said at this moment, the music in this game is phenomenal. It is so, so, so incredibly done. So incredibly done. Awesome Magic 8 Ball. Should I play Final Fantasy X? You may rely on it. 
I don't know. I see it says you may rely on it, but I'm not sure. Also, for anyone that doesn't know, well, one, normally I like to use this. I, I don't like skipping credits. I like to let these people who've worked so long and hard on the game have their moment to be recognized and stuff. So I always, regardless of what game I'm playing, I'm always gonna have the credits roll. Um, and obviously it gives me a good moment to kind of debrief and give thoughts. But also, I have been told that there is an end cutscene credit scene at the end of this, which is another reason why it's worthwhile to sit through them. We don't have to be in emo only mode, do we, right now? I would love to hear some of your guys' thoughts and opinions. Obviously no spoilers for the end cutscene. I don't know if that's why we were in emo only mode or if someone, yeah, but. Too many people, oh, too many people were ripping spoilers left and right, guys. Stop being naughty. Final Fantasy X remake Copium. Do you think they're gonna remake it? Not for ages though, surely. Surely not for ages. They've got to get through seven. Seven part two, seven part three. Yo, Puya, bless you. Bless you, bless you. Uh, all right, well then, I definitely wouldn't want to have spoilers when we're so close to the end. When we're so close to the end, but it would be interesting eventually to hear your guys' thoughts. I guess it's a great time to say, if you are watching this on YouTube, um, I would love to hear your thoughts as well. Pop them in the comments. Um, I like I like hearing varying thoughts, opinions, um, experiences with the game, all that kind of stuff. So it's a great place to. And I guess anyone who's watching live on Twitch right now, you could also put in any additional thoughts that you have in. Uh, oh, oh, interesting. Sorry, I knocked the I knocked the joystick with my hand. That's not my hand. What other thoughts do I have to share about the game? Again, it feels so weird. I feel like I'm still coming down from such like an emotional high. I'm trying to think of anything else I would have missed. The designs of the characters I think are amazing. I'm trying to think the only character that I really felt like was poorly designed or, or whose design really stood out to me was um, Isabel's. It just didn't feel believable to me. Um, or I think it didn't really suit her well, I think. In a weird way, it to me it felt quite pedestrian, even though it was supposed to make you feel other than. Um, oh, Dion. Dion's incredible. Dion's incredible. I'm so happy that we got more Dion. What an incredibly thought out character. Incredibly thought out character. What did you think of the mid airship idea? Okay, I'm gonna potentially controversial take because this is my first Final Fantasy game and I have no like m allegiance or or like ties to any of the previous games. The airship thing to me felt like it was shoehorned in a bit. I part of me wondered if this is just like pure fan service. I think it's something that's in a lot of the other Final Fantasy games. I think I remember like chat at certain points were saying were like mentioning airships or like so i find a fancy game without an airship um but i do think the really interesting and nuanced conversation that came out of that airship plot line and again this is where i think the storytelling is so incredibly well done is so mature is so nuanced um it's when mid is talking to to clive she's like trying to get it to work and it's not quite getting there to work and she goes you know, maybe this is it, maybe this is fate, maybe this is something that's actually not meant to work because if this design gets in the hands of the wrong people, think of all the horrible use that they're going to have for it. Um, and so maybe this is something that's not meant to be birthed into the world. And I think that that is a really interesting idea and concept to explore. And I think the game time and time and time again continuously sets up these really deep and impactful and kind of important conversations to be had you know um it kind of bums me out a little bit that the that the conclusion of that is her going oh i'm going to bury the schematics for the airship and i'm gonna leave it as like a treasure hunt so if you want to find it like people who 
you know, if you stumble across it, then you'll find it, whatever. It, that, to me, didn't feel like the right conclusion after the conversations that we've had. How many hours do I think it took? I, I have to believe this is around 80 hours. I'm not positive, but I, I, I can actually check, frankly. What do you, let's see. Um, it took me 74 hours, but it, it might actually be 80 hours by the end of this stream. I'm good. I'm good. Um, Sid is usually a captain of some sort, if I remember correctly. I know he was in Final Fantasy VII. So I know Sid. I know there are many iterations of Sid. They're not all the same. I know Sid best from, or only, from um, Kingdom Hearts. And in Kingdom Hearts, Sid is like a grumpy engineer type that sells you parts for your gummy ship, which is your airship in the game. Um, so I could see that being the case, that he's like a captain, ship captain something. So they wanted to, and Mid does, off, does say like, there's something that my dad and I would have been working on together and stuff. And it's very clear that her dad was quite mentally inclined for that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it was a good point. It was it was such a good uh, conclusion to, to, to Mid's side mission. Also, you know what other thing I think they did really well? Sorry, talking about Sid. Um, I really admire and respect that they, that Sid died so early on, so early on. I mean, it has to be within the first, it would have had to have been within the first 30 hours of my playthrough. Obviously a lot earlier on in other people's playthroughs. Um, and I think as a character who they knew was going to be a fan favorite, it's a character name. I think it's one of the few character names that people recognize in the game. Um, I think that that's pretty cool that, um, that, uh, they did that and i think it serves again i think they did the hard thing to re in service of the story i do think it's the better thing to do for the story am i happy with myself 100 percent run yeah i i am i am i have no interest in doing the the time trial stuff that you could do um that kind of stuff is just normally not for me uh, especially because the reward for it's not that great it's just something for your hideaway wall which is amazing um I have to believe they teleport you back to before the, the last main story in the game. I just have to think there's no way that you're not playing as Clive. Um, I think, frankly, I think there's very few things in terms of 100% that I didn't do. Like I didn't get all trophies. Um, I didn't do any of the time trial stuff, but I did all side missions. I think I got all of the important upgrade stuff. Oh, I didn't do all of the hunts. The problem with the hunts um, and there's no real solution for this, I don't think. I, I don't know how you would solve this. Um, but there gets to be a point where they all kind of get a bit easy. Um, and that's just because you're, you're leveling up, you're getting better equipment, you know, you play the game for longer. Uh, so that was also a shame. I think if they were all, well, one, if I wasn't kind of already thinking, okay, let's kind of get to the end of the playthrough. Um, but two, if they were a bit more challenging, I think the later on ones, I might have been tempted to do more of them. Um, especially wasn't super keen on them because I, I feel like a handful of them were just like reskins of other enemies. It was just like a different paint or they were larger or whatever. And on the one hand, like, I guess it. But on the other hand, it kind of felt like, uh, I don't think I need to fight, you know, my fifth plus whatever curl, whatever it is that cat with the things, you know, it kind of felt like a bit meh. But really interesting characters. I think they covered a lot of interesting character archetypes as well. The Barnabas character is one I feel like I wish I knew more about. Okay, here we go. 
I don't think I'm ready to cry fresh tears. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. The place is so verdant and colorful. I assume the blight is gone. Because that was the whole point. Every time. Will you light it? Yes, mother. Are we supposed to recognize the mum? And look, they're not using magic. They're lighting things by, by hand. Come on. If only I had the flames of an icon. Icon? Have you been reading that silly story again? <laughs> magic belongs in fairy tales, and fairy tales don't boil kettles. Okay, yep, yeah, very much a world where magic doesn't exist. Well done. Now, be a good lad, and play with your brother until supper. Come on, hurry, hurry! Right. You talk. Right. Let's play the saint in the sector. No, I don't want to be mad. The book on on the. Yep, Final Fantasy, Joshua Rossfield. Wow. Joshua wrote a book? Ugh. God damn it, I said I wasn't ready to cry fresh tears. But where one journey ends. Another begins? Nothing? <sighs> that's that's all folks. That's everything. Jeez. What an incredible journey it has been. Chewable Chewy, hey, it's all up for debate right now. Many theories about the book and what happened. What do I think? I, gosh, I don't know. Thank you for the follows. Um, I think I don't know. It could be that Joshua was writing something for a while, but there was no conclusion in the book. I wonder if someone else had penned Final Fantasy under Joshua's name. I feel like that's more likely. Um, if someone was going to pen Final Fantasy under Joshua's name though. It's tough because I don't think, like I don't think it would be a Jill or something like that. I think Jill would more sooner craft a book under Clive's name. Um, I really feel like Clive would have been the only one to pen the story under Joshua's name, but I'm not sure if Clive is alive. I think the intention was to really imply that he's dead. I don't know how he would survive the turning to turning to rock like that. I think if he was left on the beach and he didn't have the rock hand, um, I would have said maybe. I'm not sure. What if Edda named her baby after Joshua as a phoenix meaning rebirth? Maybe. But then Edda would have taken, had to have taken Joshua's surname as well. The Rossfield surname. I'm not sure if they would have. We finished basic. Yes, we just finished. We just finished. Um, I personally think Clive survived and wrote the book under Joshua's name. Not the first name that he would have taken to, not the first name you would have taken to honor someone. Oh, sorry. Cli this is also Cassery's uh, theory. Sorry. Clive talks with uh, Harpocrates ha ha about putting up his sword and writing his story after battle and gets the quill. Plus, we just see his left hand turn and stop stopping at his wrist with magic gone. I think the curse would also end and not spread more. Clive also narrates the opening and ending of the book. There's evidence for both sides. I think that that's a really solid theory for Clive being alive. My hope is, though, that if Clive is still alive, 
that there is then going to be another Final Fantasy that is a, a direct sequel of this one. But I'm fairly certain that Final Fa Well, you guys tell me. I, I could have sworn that you guys had said that Final Fantasies don't really um, have direct sequels like that. And if they were to have direct sequels, I think that's a very good reasoning to believe that Clive is still alive. So you're gonna see where the load in puts you. Oh, maybe, uh, I don't know. I want DLC now, yeah. Title screen changes a bit as well, does it? Uh, hang on. Is the difference the rippling behind the, behind the thingies? Is that what it is? I would, I hope that Clive is still alive. That would be the best outcome. Yukira, welcome in. Trophy name Falling Star. Wishes come true. Mm. If they do, it'll be Final Fantasy 16 too. Which I think would be awesome. I think my biggest like gripe or concern with the game. Concern, I don't know if that's really the right way to say it. Um, but the characters are so good. The characters are so good. The voice acting is so amazing. It would feel like such a shame to not bring back this group of people together to to carry on in a story. It feels like a crime to go tabula rasa again and 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 wipe that. Um, I think it's too good. I think it deserves better than that. Dion didn't die on screen. Copium. I hope to God. I I I highly doubt it. I don't think they're gonna do the Dion fake out death twice. Um, I would love Dion to come back. Dion is a fantastic character, fantastic character. No matter how many, no matter how many direct sequels though, Final Fantasy endings are always ambiguous. It's kind of Square Enix's thing, which is good context to have. Welcome in Vanquish. Some have also pointed out that the wolf's howl can be used to communicate location to others. Thus Toggle's cry leading Clive home because he's still alive. I, I look. This is, this, all I can say is like this. I would love nothing more than for Clive to still be alive. On top of that, I would love nothing more than for them to make another game that explores this exact world with this exact cast of people. Because I think it is wickedly interesting. I think it is so well done. I think the voice acting is amazing. I think the characters are compelling. Um, and I would love to see more of them. I think where I'm struggling right now is where the story would go from here and forget the whole that there's no magic forget the whole no 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 um no no I icons or whatever that in aside like forget that i think all of these characters have gone on such an important and such a great story arc i don't know where you would push that story arc obviously i think like there are games that have sequels all the time but it's kind of like, it's done so well in this one. I just don't know. Runa, hey, welcome in. I would love if they do a Final Fantasy, yeah, 16 too. Then we get to play as Jill. I love that she held up her rapier against Annabella without hesitating. Jill is such a, I think, genuinely interesting character. And I think she's stuck in a really tough position because I think it's important going into face ultima that clive has taken all of the icons's abilities i think that that's a thing that needs to happen and i think the way and the circumstances under which jill gave clive her ability was incredible so emotional so deep it was a perfect way for it to happen i think you wouldn't have wanted it to happen any other way with her um and yet I do think that giving up her ability does sort of diminish her role in everything. But I also think that there's something really interesting about that. I think it, it, if you put yourself in Jill's position, I think you would be going through a bit of an identity crisis. I think you would start to feel less helpful, less valuable to the group of people there because you don't have powers, the powers that you used to have to go in and help. Um, so I'm not sure how you how you reconcile the two. Who's Alexander Fury? 
Oh, okay. Trig says that Torg will howl twice and doesn't look concerned. Yes, write a story about a world that used to have magic. That sounds great, to be honest. To see how humans cope, it would be low fantasy and much darker and intense. And I think, honestly, the moments in this story that were so interesting are the more human moments like the really dark I th really dark really intense i think the fantasiness is is the layer on top of it or, or like the magicness of it is the layer on top of it that makes it really fun but also like i don't think i would want a whole game where there's no magic i mean part a huge part of the enjoyment of the game is the combat and i think that that was really rooted in using the icon stuff i don't know i don't know how you could do the game and not have the magic element she did resent the power some. It was very complicated. Adam, have a great night's sleep. Uh, I felt a lot of negative feelings are coming. I feel like I felt like a lot of negative feelings are coming more from not seeing Clive and Jill have a happy ending. Did they? They did their job, and the world lives on. A tasteful ending, in my opinion. I think. I wonder if a lot of the criticism about Clive and Jill not having a happy ending is coming from people who didn't play through all of the side missions who didn't talk to jill like because we did all of the side content we spoke to jill we exhausted all of jill's dialogue with clive and i think that whilst assuming that clive is dead they obviously didn't have that happy ending where they both live together and get to travel i think that they really did have they culminated they came together i don't think there was anything left on the table for them to express except of course living a happy future together i i if i if yeah i don't know hmm. haha <laughs> not quite wolf villain clive and jill have a child i say clive and jill have a child could be conceived for the final fight or clive lived and it's named Joshua, so he could have written the book. I mean, that would mean that this story, that end cutscene happens so much further in the future. Which maybe it does. I'm not sure. Also, the coast of Sombrek, you can see the wave Mother Crystal frozen slightly. So if there's no magic, how's the co Oh, combat's supposed to be fun. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. Oh, Alexander is a summon icon from other games. I'm glad you enjoyed the game. I think you'd enjoy the stories of earlier games from 7 onwards anyway, aside from the earlier ones being turn-based combat. I definitely want to play through... Um, I definitely want to play through um, Final Fantasy VII Remake. For sure it's on the list. For sure, for sure, for sure. Um, I just don't know when. If magic is... Very, yeah, I'm sure it makes its way into the future. I think so. Uh, what would you give it out of 10? O honestly, I... I I, I think I would have to go like 10 out of 10. Is it perfect? No. And I know a 10 out of 10 would identify, like signify that it's perfect. But I think the things that are imperfect about it are so small, in my mind, so small and trivial in, in the grand scheme of things. Like maybe an 8.9. I'm sorry, 9.8 9 out of 10. Um, because only because a lot of that animation stuff really personally did pull me out of it. Hi, Purple. Welcome in. I'm glad I found your channel from this game. I love your comments about this game. That means the absolute world to me. Hi, Purple. And and all of you that are still here, those of you that found this playthrough, whether it be on Twitch, uh, whether it's on YouTube, whether this is your first time in stream or whatnot, I'm so incredibly thankful that, that you're here. I hope I get to see you in future streams. Um, I know that we just wrapped up Final Fantasy 16 and there's probably a lot of you guys that were big fans of that of that game. I'm a variety streamer, um, so there's always going to be something kind of different going on. But I do play a lot of action adventure, story driven games. I obviously invest a lot of myself into these games, into the stories, into the people. Um, so even though it's not Final Fantasy, I'm still going to be very emotional and very pulled into the story or not pulled into the story. And therefore, we can talk about why something's kind of working ineffectively. Um, and like I said, I definitely will be playing through the Final Fantasy VII Remake. So lots coming on. 